Hi guys. So this is a pretty big subject, and I'm not going to be able to teach it to you entirely in this video, but what I am going to be able to do is give you a groundwork for you to teach yourself. And the thing about this is a lot of people get intimidated by music theory because it seems very complicated, and when it comes down to it, certain aspects of it are, but the really important things that you need to know aren't. But what is missed out, I think, in a lot of tutorials and in a lot of people's understanding of music theory is the way that it needs to be learned. And it's not a bunch of facts for you to know. It's more something that you need to become intimately familiar with, right? And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about the chords that are used in Western culture, right? And how they fit into a system which is called functional harmony, but it's basically harmonic theory. And all it really comes down to is uh, we're going to identify the seven chords that exist, uh, and I'm going to take you through some examples and sort of how I interpret them and how they make me feel, right? But what's really important is it's understanding these chords and being able to build them is actually not very hard. What's really important, though, is becoming intimately familiar with these chords, like they're your best friends, right? You know them inside and out, you know how they're going to behave in certain situations, and the way they express things are familiar to you, right? And it's not something that you can learn intellectually, right? It's something that you're going to have to experiment with and play around with until you, like I said, become intimately familiar with these chords. And this is not something that a lot of people who are teaching theory will really tell you, right? It's, it's not about learning the theory, right? You can know this bit of theory that I'm going to share with you, but it really comes down to becoming intimately familiar with these chords and how do they make you feel. I want to talk about the importance of harmony. So Andrew Wong did a really great video, and I'll try and link it in the description, but he basically took... Mary Had a Little Lamb, and then the song Closer by the Chainsmokers. And he did an experiment in which he swapped the chord progression out of Closer and played the Mary Had a Little Lamb melody to it. And he did the same thing where he took the melody line from Closer and he played it over the Mary Had a Little Lamb chord progression. And what he found is that the chord progression from Closer, which is cool and syncopated, made Mary Had a Little Lamb awesome. And then when he played the chord progression from Mary Had the Little Lamb, which is very basic and boring, right, it ruined the closer and made the melody line seem terrible, right? And, you know, you'll notice that the melody lines of those songs are very similar. Definitely check out the video. But what it really got to is that chords are more important about making music exciting than the melody line is. And it's, it's not obvious because our ear is listening to the melody line and paying attention to the melody line. And we don't think about the chords overtly all the time, but the chords are really where it's at. And the analogy that I like to use is novels and stories, chords are like the setting, and then melody is like the plot. And you might think a, you know, a movie or a book or whatever needs a good plot, but actually it's more important that it has a good setting. So if you look at you know the most successful novels or whatever, the most successful TV shows, right? think about like Harry Potter, it's... Not necessarily the plot line of Harry Potter that's so magical, but it is, you know, it, it's good and all, but the wizarding world that's crafted and the, the, you know, the existing tension with Voldemort returning, that's actually a circumstances of the world, right? You live in this world where you've got wizards in the underground and muggles don't know about them and this evil wizard is returning and, you know, everything's going crazy as a result. Right. Same idea like Game of Thrones, right? You've got this world where everyone's ruthless, right? You know, you've got these political factions, you've got this imposing threat of the White Walkers. And even if, you know, there's no plot device uh, happening where the White Walkers are actually coming down in that scene, it's this overarching threat of all of these battles that are happening between these different kingdoms and stuff don't matter because the White Walkers are coming and there's this like threat to all of humanity, right? You know, the existence of dragons is all part of the setting. And so it's really the world that's crafted that provides a foundation or a context in which to interpret the plot events, right? And so, you know, something can happen, but because it happened in that world under those circumstances, it gives you a whole new way to interpret it, right? And it becomes much more exciting as a result. 
And so that's how I like to think about harmony, is it's the setting in which your song is taking place, it's the setting in which your melody is interpreted. And what you'll actually find once you get good at harmony is that when you construct melodies and such, uh, you will get more mileage out of programming your melody notes with respect to the chords that are going on at any given time, as opposed to just the key that you're in. And if you're paying attention to what chord is happening, and you're picking the right notes relative to the chord that's happening at any given time, you'll be able to get much more thrilling melody lines, much more vocal melody lines. And so you really want to pay attention to the harmony. And it's easy to overlook, right? It's probably one of the easiest things to overlook. And in electronic music, I think it's one of the biggest deficiencies, right? So that's why I'm doing this video. So before we get started on the theory on what chords to use and why and how they show up functionally, I just want to show you the actual like way that chords are constructed systematically within a key, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with C major, right? And we're this this is going to be in the key of C major in particular. Right? And so in order to construct a chord, right, you need what's called the one, the three, and the five, right? So you're gonna skip the two and skip the four, and these are notes in the scale. So if C is our one, because we're in C, right? The second note would be D. We're skipping that and going straight to the third note, which is E, right? This distance is called a major third, and it's four semitones above the root, right? So one, or this would be zero, one, two, three, four. So this is the third. From there, we need to go up to the fifth, which would be skipping F, which is our fourth, right, and going up to G. And you'll notice that this is one, two, three more semitones above, and so that seven semitones total makes that fifth, and this is a major chord. So in order to construct all the chords in the key, and there's only seven of them, right, the the best way to show you, I think, is to take this major chord, and we're just going to duplicate it out and move it up onto each of the scale degrees, meaning the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5, etc. So check it. That's the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is all the chords in the key. Uh, but not quite, because some of these aren't right. All of these are major chords, and not all the chords in a scale are major. And if we hit this full button, you're going to notice there's some black keys in there. Well, there's no black keys in C major. It's all white keys. So I just want you to take a look at these chords. Uh, C major is fine, but you'll notice this has an F sharp, and that's on a black key. This is a G sharp. That's a black key. Right. Also, this is a C sharp, which is a black key, and this has a D sharp, which is a black key, and it has an F sharp up here, which is also a black key. So if we take all of those notes that are on black keys and we drop them down so that they're on white keys, we're going to get all the chords that are in the scale, like the real right proper chords. So let's check this. So we drop this down, 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 and then this fifth also goes down. So let me talk about what we just did is we went from a major chord on any of these things we dropped the third, we dropped it down one semitone, which makes it into a minor third. Minor third is three semitones above the root. So the, really the only difference between a major chord and a minor chord is that the third is just a half step down. So what we just did, right, all that is just that's minor now, that's minor now, that's minor. Turning this D here to minor would make this a minor chord. When we drop this fifth, down to a flat fifth, it becomes what's called a diminished chord. Listen to this. It's really tense. It's really dark. Um, it's not used very often, but it is a really nice chord. Uh, but it's probably the least useful of the seven chords for uh, the type of music you guys are writing. Minor just means a flat three. Diminished just means a flat three and a flat five. But notice what happens when we hit this fold button. You're going to see that all we have left is white keys. And notice the regular pattern going on here. We skip a note then play the next one. Skip a note, play the next one. And that's true of all seven chords in the key. Now, some of them start with, you know, three semitones different. Some start with four semitones difference. But the pattern of actual notes that are within the key is exactly the same. And what you'll find is the one chord is major, the four and five chords are major. Right, and then the six chord is minor, and the two and three are minor. And then the seven chord is this outlier, it's the diminished chord. So that's all there is 
to this part. This is just the actual construction of these chords. But what I really want you to get out of this video is not about how to construct these chords. The trick to music theory and making it practical and actually be able to create art with it is you want to look at these seven chords as like your seven best friends and you know everything about them. You know how they're going to show up in different situations, you know what habits they have, what strengths and weaknesses they have, all those sorts of things. Uh, you know, which is going to take time and experimentation and like using them in different situations and stuff like that. But if you can do that, then you're going to know what chord to use when. You're going to know that if you lead from a four chord, it's not going to be, you know, this cheesy, happy place, but it's still going to have like an uplifting, bright vibe. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to take you through a bunch of different chord progressions. I'm going to talk to you um, sort of about why these are so important and uh, take you through how they make me feel, right, and how when strung together in different ways, they work differently. And hopefully by the end, you'll have enough of a basis to understand uh, how you personally can start getting related to these chords. And honestly, this is the only piece of harmonic theory that you really need to know. And the last thing I wanted to do is actually show you how I'm going to do it in this video, which is not to use all the notes at once. I think that this can be a little bit confusing. And so instead of showing you all of these notes at once, I'm just going to use the root chord. I'm going to have Ableton MIDI devices construct the rest of the chords going on. So let's just disable these really quick. So if we only had our root notes, I just want to show you a trick. And this is a very powerful trick. Um, I highly recommend doing it. But if we take MIDI devices and we take a my major scale, which is what we're on, C major, and if we take a chord device before it, and we put this on four semitones, which is that major third, and we put this on seven semitones, which is that fifth, then this is going to produce a major chord for every time that we play one of these notes, right? Um, and then we don't always want major chords. Sometimes we want minor chords. Sometimes we want diminished chords. This is going to then correct all the notes and make them either minor or diminished like they're supposed to be. So if we record in the output that's coming from here, so if we hit record here and play here, all right, uh, then you'll notice that this is exactly what we had before, right, with these grayed out notes, but they're not grayed out, right, because they were constructed just from those root notes. So this is what we're going to do, and the reason I'm going to do that is just because I think it's going to be easier to follow. Um, you know, if we only have to look at one note and you can think about a chord as a whole unified object as opposed to a collection of three notes, right? You think about a chord as one thing, but it's, it's just easier to work this way. And if you're trying to construct chords on your own and you're not super strong in the music theory, it might be easier for you to just build this rack really quick. And I can put a download link in the description. All right, so uh, when we talk about chords, it's really much better to learn chords by number. So if you look over here, Right, I have all these numbers here, and these correspond to chord numbers. Right Now, all this is relative to major, and specifically I've put us in C major, which is all the white keys. Right, So you can see here, a C is going to be a 1 chord. Right, This down here, this C would also be a 1 chord. And as we move up from C to D, E, F, and G, this would be your 2 chord would be D, your 3 chord would be E, your 4 chord would be F, your 5 chord would be G, your 6 chord would be A, your seven chord, which we aren't going to use very much because it's it's tricky, and you know I can talk about it a little bit, and I'll give you one example during this video. But it's probably the least useful chord for most of the music that you guys are making, right? But then you get back to C, which would be you know it's not your eight chord; it's back to your one. Chord. You know, it's really just about becoming intimately familiar with these chords, and it doesn't matter what key you're in, right? If we were in D, well then it would be that D is the one chord, and that if we go up a full step or two semitones right, to E, that would be our two chord, right? Um, and it would just be the same thing. So if you learn chords by number, as opposed to this is a D minor chord, and this is like an you know, F chord or whatever, um, you only need to learn about them once, and you don't need to think about every different chord as a different chord, right? Every one chord is a one chord, and every one chord is going to behave similarly, right? And then we're going to talk about the way it functions, and then that's all the harmonic theory that you're actually going to need to learn to produce great music and have a really rich harmony. 
first let's talk about function. So there's three functions, right? There's tonic function, and that basically feels like you're at home. And whether it's a happy home or a sad home, it doesn't really matter, but you feel like you're already there, right? You're not necessarily feeling like you have to go anywhere or anything like that. You feel like you're at home. The tonic chords are your one chord in major, your six chord, which is your one chord in minor, right? But relative to major, it's your six chord. I'm going to talk about everything relative to major, but what you need to know is your one chord in major, which is going to be C, is going to be a major chord, and that's your home base, right? So that'd be a C major chord. Your six chord, which is your minor home base, right? That would be A minor in the example we're using, or in which we're in the key is C major. It would be your A minor chord, right? So C, D, E, F, G, A, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? That is A minor, right? So that's going to be your minor home base. And uh, there's, there's some debate about your three chord, whether or not it is tonic, or some people think it functions more subdominantly. I think about it both ways, depending on how I'm using it. I think about it as my either what's called my Phrygian home base, right? And so if you want to get darker than minor, you can treat your three chord like it's your home base for a while. Um, but in other circumstances, it might function more like a subdominant chord. And we'll get to what that means in just a second. But those are basically your tonic chords, uh, one, six, and sometimes three. All right, so that would be an E minor in the case of C major. All right, dominant chords feel like you're going somewhere. They will take over and be like, hey, we are pointed in that direction and we are going there. And specifically, they're pointing back home, All right? So your five chord is the most important dominant chord, and in some ways it's one of the most important chords besides maybe your one chord. But if you play a five chord, which is going to be a G major chord in this context, it will pull you back to one. Now this seven chord, it's a half diminished chord. And all that means is it's not only got a flat three, it's also got a flat five. And it's the wonky chord. Most people will tell you just avoid a seven chord. But if you want to use a seven chord, you know, they're beautiful and stuff. They're really useful, um, but they are dominant and they're going to be pushing you back home. Now, subdominant chords, right? These are going to be your two chord and your four chord, right? And in some contexts, maybe your three chord, right? Um, so these, you don't feel like you're at home, but you don't have a solid direction. Like you're not pointed directly at home. And these are really useful. In fact, uh, subdominant chords are probably my favorite chords to start off on if I'm not going to start off on a tonic chord. So a lot of songs will start off on your root chord, right? If you're like, you know, even if you're in a minor and maybe they'll start on your, your, your minor home bass, uh, but it's really nice to start off on a subdominant chord. And I've got audio examples. I'm going to show you of all of these. And then this is um, just going to be an example that's going to show you other ways that your ear will interpret these things, right? And it's not always just going to be tonic, dominant, and subdominant, that you can actually have a direction that the harmony itself is going, and so we'll talk about it. So let's just take a listen really quick. So this is really basic. Um, this is just your one chord going to a six chord, back to one, back to six. Really quick aside, see how I'm using some are capital Roman numerals and some are lowercase Roman numerals? The capital Roman numerals mean it's a major chord. The lowercase Roman numerals mean it's a minor chord. So let's take a listen really quick to these examples. So this, you're always going to be on a tonic chord. We're going to go from the major home base, that's the one, to the minor home base, that's the six. Right? And when, you'll notice that as we get from one to the other, we feel like we're in a different place, but we still feel solidly there and like we aren't necessarily trying to go anywhere. So just take a listen. Right, so it's happy and then when it hits this sad chord, it gets a little wistful. And then it gets a little bit bright again and it gets a little wistful again, right? We're happy, now we're wistful. Happy again. Right, so one of the things I want you to take away from this example is that it matters where you start, right, in terms of processing this whole phrase as a, um, a setting or a expressive idea. It matters where you start and where you're going to, right? And so we're starting from somewhere happy, we're adding in some sad, but we're returning back to the happy. Right, if we start on the six chord and go to the one and back to the six, this whole phrase is going to sound way darker. 
Have a listen. Right, and so we start in a darker place and we get happier for a little bit, but then we go back to a darker place and then we get happier for a little bit, right? Which is different than starting happy and getting dark and starting happy and getting dark, right? So hopefully that makes sense to you, but none of them are really pulling, right? So let's take a listen to this. So this is starting on a one chord, which is tonic. So this is like home bass. This A is also going to be a home bass kind of chord, but our sad home bass. Then this is a subdominant chord, and I'm just doing this just to sort of illustrate example, but what I really want you to listen to is this chord here. This is our five chord, and again, this is a dominant chord, so this is going to feel like you want to go back home to your one chord, right? And you might go back home to your six chord, but it's pulling you towards a home base chord. So let's take a listen to this really quick. I really want you to listen to the directionality of this last chord. Right, it feels like we ended, right? We were like pulling, let's go home, let's go home, let's go home on this G, right? And then finally it's, we get home and it just feels like we're resolved, right? We could exaggerate that, say we double this up and so we stay on this, this chord that's pulling us back home for a while. Right, you'll notice that it really is like saying, hey, let's go home, let's go home. Take a listen. Right, and we could get an even stronger sense of resolution if we were to um, use this C down here. Because the other thing is you want to tend to resolve downwards, like you're falling, to, you know, and resolving downwards like gravity. Uh, so if we listen just to this really quick. Right, it gives a really good sense of completion. So that's this idea of dominant, is it's this pull towards getting back home. And when you do finally get home, it's really, really nice and it feels complete. Even if you go towards a six chord, right? that's still going to give you a sense of having resolved, right? And it's not going to be as happy as a resolution. It's going to be a sadder resolution, right? But uh, just have a listen. And, you know, like I said, you want to get intimately familiar with the expressive qualities of these chords, right? And how this sense of tension is bringing you back and how when we get to the sense of being at home at the end, right, this is going to be a sad home, but at least we'll feel like we've resolved somewhere. So just have a listen. Right, so we're just like, we're home now, and it kind of sucks, but we're home, right? So uh, hopefully that was enlightening. Um, this example is really useful. So this actually takes a note that's out of the key. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this three chord, but we're not going to use a minor three, which is what you expect. We're going to use a major three chord. And the reason for that is, and in order to even get that to work, I'm actually going to change that right so what i just did is i want it if it plays in a sharp or sorry uh g sharp right in a flat i want it to play not a g so i don't want it to correct from an a sharp or sorry a g sharp to a g i want it to play the g sharp now the reason for that is the g sharp is the leading tone the t do right it's that leading tone that pulling tone to the a and a is the minor home base. It's that six chord. So the idea is that this three chord is really functioning like the dominant five chord, right, of six, right? It's the five of six, right? And all these five chords are all dominant. So this is going to pull you, and it's specifically going to be pointing not towards the happy home base, which the regular five chord is pretty much going to be pointing more towards the happy home base than the sad home base. This one's actually going to be pointing you towards the minor home base. And it's going to be like, oh man, we need to like get back to this sad home of ours or whatever. So take a listen. So
Right, and we'll get a better sense of resolution if we go to a one that's an octave down. Because again, you really want to resolve downward. The ear wants to hear the resolution downward. But you can get a sense for this E major chord really pulling towards that A minor, right? So if we take away that, then we say, hey, let's just play a G instead of a G sharp. You're going to lose that leading tone. You're going to lose that pull to take you back to six. All right, so let's have a listen to that. So in this case, this, it's not really pulling you as strongly home to A as this is, right? It doesn't feel like we ever resolved. It just says, felt like, oh, we were at an E for a while. Now we're on an A minor chord. Now we're going to this G. So to what's there to take out of this is that, again, the dominant function is pulling you towards home. It comes from these leading tones, which is the half step down from a tonic chord, a home bass. So if you're talking about C major, half step down from C is a B. When you have a B, like you have in a G chord, a G chord is G, B, D. Right? That B is on that five chord, that G chord, that five chord is what's pulling you back to the one. Right? That B leading tone is pulling you back to the one. If you do an E major chord, then you have got an E, G sharp B. Right, and that G sharp is going to lead you to A because it's a half step down from the A. It's going to be pulling you towards that A. So that's this idea of dominant chords, right? And mostly it's going to be that five chord. It's going to be a seven chord. Or if you turn your three chord from a minor three chord into a major three chord, that's a really clever tactic. Um, Cashmere does that a lot. Producers who know harmony theory know that trick to take a three chord and make it major and really pull you back into your six chord home base. If this you were talking about minor and you're thinking about A minor, that's my one chord, right? I, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about in terms of the major key as opposed to the minor key. But if you did, that would be your five chord, right? So A, B, C, D, E, E would be your five chord. So again, it's your five chord that's pulling you back to your one chord. It's just minor this time, and it has to be a major five chord, right? Because that's the one that's going to contain the leading tone. Now, subdominant, again, subdominant, it doesn't feel like you're going anywhere in particular, right? But it doesn't feel like you're at home. And your main subdominant chords are going to be your two chord and your four chord. Uh, your four chords, honestly, your four chords probably like your money chord if you want something to be happy, but you don't want it to be like can't be happy like your one chord is. Right, the one chord, it's like almost too happy. And if you don't want your song to be like a super happy song, right, then maybe don't use your one chord at the beginning because it's just going to feel like you're setting out and it's like, you know, Sesame Street or something like that. I and mean, it's going to be like really, really happy. So your four chord is a great place to start to have a happy section. So you want to contrast with a darker section that maybe starts on your six chord. The four chord would be a really, really great place to start. Right, so maybe we're doing one section. Right, I'm going to start on this with this three chord here for a second, just so you can um, see this example. And then we're going to switch over and I'm going to play this. And you're going to see how all of a sudden now we're in a happy place. You're going to feel a pull because of this dominant function that we're going to start with. You're going to feel a pull to get back to right your minor home base. But instead of going here, we're going to go to the four chord. This is what's called a deceptive cadence. A cadence is a chord combination that feels like a resolution or something. The common cadence would be this um, this major three chord is pulling back to the six chord, right? It wants to resolve this dominant function, wants to resolve to the tonic. But instead of going where you're expected to go, we're going to be like, no, that's not where we're going. We're going to the four chord, right? So take a listen to this. So we're... we're okay, this last chord is going to pull us to the six chord, but we're going to go... And feel how much more uplifting it is because you really expect to land on this six, right? Which is this minor home base. You really expect this to resolve to a sad place.
right? But we instead of going, you know, our sixth chord, this A minor chord, we go to this F major chord. So all of a sudden we're at a happy place. And also listen to this F. It's not going to feel like you're home. It does feel like you're not home, but it does it's not going to point you back home like the dominant chords does. Right, listen to that. Right, so you're bright and you're happy. You know, you're sort of like, it's kind of uplifting, right? But it's not pulling you anywhere in particular, right? So that's really, really nice. And I, I want to mention one other thing about this. The way we interpret chords is usually by the lowest note, which is often going to be your bass line. So say you have a six chord up top, that's A, C, and E. Right, I can program that in here for you so you just you can see it really quick. Um, but if we had an A, right, a C, and an E, uh, let me turn off this chord rack really quick, right, if we drop an F under here, right, this F, an F chord is an F, A, C, right, so an F chord is an F, A, C, and an a chord, A minor, is A, C, E, right? So they share these two notes. So just by sticking this F chord underneath it, all of a sudden I've turned this sad tonic chord into a happy subdominant chord, right? And so even if you had the same chords going up top, but you just took your bass line and you had your bass line play an F as opposed to an A, it's going to make your whole song open up into some bright feeling or like empowering feeling place. So this, your two chords also subdominant, but it's a minor subdominant. So it's kind of like a more melancholy place to start. And two chords are really nice and interesting. Um, they're less commonly used. So if you've ever heard about like, you know, all pop songs are four chords, they're specifically talking about the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, and the six chord, right? And they're just those chords in different orders. Right, this one involves a two chord. Right, the two chord is kind of like the minor version of a four chord, if you want to think about it like that. But it, to me, it's got like a wistful, like melancholy sort of sense to it. But it's not as dark as your home bass. And then the three chord can be even darker depending on how you use it. Have a listen to this. Right, so this is going to be a D minor chord, an F major chord, right, an A minor chord, and a G major chord. Right, but this is just your two chord. Right, your four chord, this is your six chord, and then a five chord. Listen to how it feels starting from this two chord. Right, it's gonna start in a dark place. Right, it's not gonna feel like home. It's not gonna be pointing anywhere specific per se. It kind of points towards the five chord a little bit because it's the five of five. Right, if you do five and you think about five as your one, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, nine is your two. Two chords can point a little bit towards your five chord, and like a two five one is a is a really common um, cadence, like to resolve things, especially in jazz. But just have a listen to this. I love that. I love the way it sounds when you come from a two chord, right? It's like, I don't know, wistful and like, I don't know, there's like this dark brightness to it or something. I think it's like a really pretty place to start. It gets used very rarely in electronic music for some reason. Um, and pop music, it doesn't get used too often. I want to show you one more example with a two chord. And this is going to be the same idea, but this is just going to be moving up in pitch. So this is going two, three, four four, five, right? It's just going up a scale. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because you're still going to get a sense of we're starting at this two chord, but it's kind of going to get trumped by this, this building direction, right? We're going up and up and up in pitch. And so this is going to just feel like we're building, building, and building, building. And then we're ending on a dominant chord. So we've got this upward momentum and then we're ending on this dominant chord really being like, hey, let's go home, let's go home, let's go home which either could be our one chord or a six chord, have a listen. I'll probably go to a one chord after this, and it's going to be this like really big building upward, happy building thing, and then we'll go home. So let's, let's actually program that. 
right? So have a listen to this, and you know we'll get this really nice resolution at the end. Right. We could also go to this six chord. You can notice that we're building right up towards the six chord. And remember what I said is, you know, this dominant chord technically it's pointing towards a C, but it's actually it's very common to use a five chord resolved to a six chord. So this dominant five chord it's pointing towards home. It's okay to go to your sad home base, which is the six chord. All right. So have a listen to it this way. Right? It's like we finally got home, and it's like it's like kind of a sad home. And there's lots of ways that we could have done this. We could have gone like a four, five, two, three, for instance. Right? So let's do that really quick. But this major three chord, which is the pointing dominant one, and then back to six. It's really gonna have this nice resolution, like where we've landed home at six. That's honestly, there's a lot to unravel there. And remember, it's not just like learning about subdominant and dominant and tonic functions. It's becoming intimately familiar with these people, knowing how they're going to behave in each circumstance. And if you know the chords by number, regardless of if you're in C major and A minor, like we've been in now, or if you're in C sharp major, you know, an A sharp minor, a B flat minor, right? Like you might be. It will all be different chords, but if you relate to them by number, they're all going to behave the same way. So I will leave you with a couple pointers and just things. You know, I've talked a lot about resolution, but it's not always a good thing to resolve. And it can be, but it's not always a good thing to actually resolve. Sometimes if you resolve all the tension or you resolve or you go home after the end of like really pointing back home, it feels like the song's done. Um, and it doesn't have to. Right. So you can like say during a build, like you can build and then you can like do this, like this major three chord. You can throw that in right before you land on a drop. I do that. I'll give an audio example of that. Um, this is the build on a song I wrote called Pipe Dream. It's kind of like a like a delirium kind of ethno bass track. Um, but have a listen. I want you really to listen for is the notes that I use just before the end of the drop. Right. You're going to hear that that leading tone that, you know, same like we had in this one where it's got that, that pull back to here. And it does resolve to one chord. I lead at the drop, I lead on a one chord, but just have a listen to how much tension it builds in those last seconds before the drop, right? You know, you've got the drums and everything, uh, which are, are common EDM techniques and stuff, but have a listen to the harmonic tension that's built from the use of notes here. <laughs> Right, and specifically right here, right, you can hear on that fourth beat, I switch to that leading tone, and that really, really pulls you back into where you end up at 81. Right. <laughs> Um, this is just one of the many, many things that you can use this stuff for. Uh, I honestly, I think that if more producers learned harmony theory, like music would be way better. Um, you know, uh, good good producers use really good chord progression. So, you know, learn this stuff. It's really not that hard. And it's it's not about learning a bunch of music theory. It's really about becoming intimately familiar with these seven chords, fall into these three functions, tonic, dominant, subdominant. Right, and just getting a sense for what that actually means in terms of the way it is expressive and the way it makes you feel, and using that to create a setting for your melody lines and everything to be interpreted in, you know, it's it's really makes a huge difference in music. So I hope this was enlightening. I understand that music theory can be a daunting topic and you know, it's probably confusing when I'm saying like, you know, dominant this, you know, towards like six chord, blah, blah, blah. 
like it can kind of like go in one ear and out the other because you're like, I don't know what any of those words mean or whatever. Don't worry about it. I mean, like listen to it again, try and get a sense for what those words mean. But ultimately, I just want you to explore through these different chord functions, right? The different orders of these chords and just try and get used to what a one chord feels like, what a four chord feels like, what's the difference when you start on a four chord versus a one chord, and just sort of play around with all these different things. I highly recommend doing it on a piano or doing it on any type of keys that you can play because it'll, it'll benefit your playing more. But even if you program it like this, uh, this is a really great trick that I did here uh, with this chord going into a scale, right? It'll make it so you can you only need to deal with one note in terms of programming your chords. But yeah, I mean, like once you get intimately familiar with these, then you can start thinking about, oh, doing different voicings of chords and other stuff like that that's a little bit more advanced. I'll do sub or uh, videos on those topics too, but I really feel like the, the take home here that will really change your guys' production is to become intimately familiar with these chords, like they're your best friends. So you know how they're going to react in these different circumstances. You know what to expect from them. You know what their personalities are like. Because if you do that, there's really only seven of them. There's four of them that are like super necessary. That's the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, and the six chord. The next ones you would tackle are the two chord and the three chord. You can use the seven chord if you want or don't ever use it, that's fine too. But if you just become intimately familiar with these chords, constructing really awesome chord progressions, like having different sections that switch up the chord progressions and change everything, right, will become second nature to you and you'll be able to produce way better music, like much, much better music. So uh, thanks so much, guys, for listening. Um, you know, like and subscribe and all that stuff. I've got so many more videos coming for you. Um, you know, I love teaching. I love uh, sharing knowledge and I love making the music in this world better and uh, giving producers the tools to make more powerful, evocative music that um, can actually make a difference in this world. So thank you so much, and uh, take care. weird chord right but it's still leading back to our one chord right it's got that t do feel here it's like right it's like that that you know do re mi fa so la ti do right it's like that almost there we got to get there we got to get there that's the essence of the dominant function the dominant function are the chords that contain that note basically and the five chord contains it as its third so if you look at this g it's got that B in it, and it's going to lead you back to one. It's like, feels like it wants to go back home.